May 2024, the southern part of Brazil was hit by one of the worst ever floods in its history. The catastrophe claimed the lives of 155 people while forcing another 540,000 out of their homes. The estimated economic losses from the 2024 floods in Brazil were around $4 billion. In India, a total of around 1,500 people died during extreme weather events in 2024. These were compiled by the IMD or India Meteorological Department. Even though these events happened in two different parts of the world, climate change seems to be a common denominator. But what is interesting is that not everyone is equally affected by the consequences of extreme weather events. In the first nine months of the year 2022, extreme weather events impacted 75 million people and caused over 10,000 deaths. 94% of these people were from Asia and Africa. But neither the US nor the EU figure amongst the top 10 countries that face these casualties. Even though the US is historically responsible for 25% of the emissions, while the EU's share is 17%. This shows that while all states are responsible for addressing global environmental destruction, the responsibility is not meant to be shared equally. This forms the basis of CBDR or Common but Differentiated Responsibilities. This was a foundational principle of both the Paris Agreement in 2015 and the UNFCCC. Developing countries are thus asking for a mechanism to receive reparations from the developed countries for climate change impacts caused by the latter. Add to it the cost of adapting to and mitigating greenhouse gas emissions to future-proof against the effects of climate change and this constitutes the basis for climate finance. Finance is a key enabler of climate action. Hence, arriving at a finance goal that best serves the needs of these countries is significant for ensuring climate justice. It is also the center of the upcoming COP29 negotiations. But before we jump into the world of climate finance, let's start with the basics. What is climate finance? There is no single definition for climate finance. It aims at reducing greenhouse gas emissions, increasing carbon sinks, and increasing the resilience of human and ecological systems to the harmful impacts of climate change. But countries require money for these mitigation and adaptation activities. This is in the form of building renewable energy plants, increasing the number of electric vehicles, or constructing seawalls for protecting communities against storms and rising sea levels, shifting to climate resilient food crops such as millets, etc. So climate finance is an enabler that can make such climate action possible. It can come from different sources, public or private, national or international, bilateral, multilateral. It can employ different instruments such as grants, donations, green bonds, equities, debt swaps, guarantees and concessional loans. So the main question is, what is the cost of climate change? and who decides these figures? For these answers and more of such simplified explanations, keep watching Down to Earth's run-up series for COP29.